For this video, let's talk about cambering the blade, creating a slight curvature to the cutting edge so that you can use it as a smoothing plane. Now, in general, I keep the blades straight across. Why? Because that's the easiest way to maintain them, the easiest way to hone them. And in general, that's the blade I use probably like 95% of the time. But the problem with that is, when you're using a square blade on a wider surface, it leaves little steps that can be felt with your hand. Much better would be to cut a blade, or hone a blade rather, with a slight curvature to it, a very slight curvature to it, so that when you're cutting, you're leaving very shallow grooves, you might say, so the surface blends together and has this very, very slight undulation. We're talking about a very small amount. When I do camber this blade, I want to have it so that when it's sticking, into the, sticking out of the bottom of the plane, that the edges are not cutting. The rest of it is cutting in a slight arc. There's one other variation, I'll show you doing this. The one other variation is with just the corners broken. It's kind of a hybrid, you might say. You can use it for general work, but you can also use it for smoothing if you have to. Now, if you're going to be doing work where you're just doing edges and narrow pieces, this will do very nice smoothing work. But certainly for doing jointing work, where you're going to be joining together two boards, you want a straight blade. Now, the cambering happens on the stone. It does not happen on the grinder. If you have a scrub plane, like this plane right here, that has a very strong curvature to the blade, that's one I would probably go to the grinder. It's much trickier to do that. But this is a blade that does very aggressive cutting, and the curved edge of it means it can go through the fibers without tearing a great degree on the edges. The curvature that I'm looking for on my cambered blade, as it's called, is so slight that if you hold a wooden straight edge to it, you can see just the faintest bit of light on both sides, similar to like the thickness of a piece of hair. Okay, if it's a brand new blade, I'd go right to the 500 grit stone and do the work on there. You're not doing this on the grinder. We're talking about such a fine arc of curve that you, don't, you can't do it on the grinder. You'll cut too much too quickly. So the idea is that there's maybe five positions along the front of the blade here. One, two, the center three, four, and five. And as I'm working, I'm going to put pressure on one, two, three, four, and five to work the two outside edges more. I want to cut them back. So let's start in. Cut with number one. And now number two. Now the center. Now four. And now five. And you can barely see that, maybe, if you look at the edge that there's a little bit more cutting going on in terms of the uh, shiny part of the edge gets a little wider towards the outside. But the way I really look at it is to hold the little straight edge up to the light and sort of see what's happening. Now I've just barely started, so I need to keep on going. But on a coarse stone is where I shape the blade, get the geometry as I call it. It's curvature. And then the other stones are going to do the same thing, only they're going to hone it to a higher and higher polish and a better, more long-lasting edge. Okay, that's probably enough. That's a coarse cutting stone. And I can see that I've got some nice little bit of light happening at the outside of where I'm holding this edge. We talked about just a hair of light. Certainly, you can cut, make this edge much more curved if you want. And that would be nice from the point of view if you wanted to leave a texture on the surface. There's not many pieces of furniture that I can imagine that you'd want that much texture. I don't think you'd want that on a dining table or a table in your house. But I think maybe something like a bench, that you might want to put some texture into it. And it could be a very interesting way to add some detail to your work. So think about this as the beginning for like a smoothing plane where I am trying to keep it smooth, but other times you might want to add more curvature to create more interesting textures. So do the same thing on the next fine stone. 
like I said, all I'm doing is now polishing that edge. If when I'm working, it looks like the shape isn't pronounced enough, then I'll work the two outsides more. But I don't think that's the case here. I think I pretty much have a good start. And just to make sure. And I think you can almost see now that I've got some curvature happening because you can see the hone lines coming down a little bit more on the edges. And let me just check with my little straight edge. I always use a piece of wood because it's a much more gentle on the edge than a piece of like a steel uh, uh, square or ruler. And just keep the process going. Polish it more and more. You won't dig into the stone if you're careful. That is a worry. Later on when I'm using the blade, I'm going to be paying careful attention to the size of the shaving that I'm making. If it's a very narrow shaving, then the next time I sharpen, I'm going to take more out of the center. If it's a very wide shaving and the corners are still cutting, I'm going to hone them more. So before I start sharpening next time, I'll have some idea how to maybe make the edge better or more productive to what I'm actually trying to do. Now in this stone, I'll actually do the back too and take the burr off. So this is the 8,000 stone. This is generally where I stop in honing. But if I were going to be doing some very difficult figured wood or something like that, I would go maybe to a higher grid. So the same operation, using the edges, using the positions. And on a high angle blade, you need to have a certain amount of curvature. And on a low angle blade, you need to have more curvature than that. Because you can imagine the geometry here, the curvature is going to have to be greater on a low angle blade. And also, I like doing this freehand. I like the ability to just put the pressure where I want, rotate the blade. But you certainly can do the same work with a jig, especially one with a small wheel, so you can tip the blade. Let's give it a try now and see how the plain blade works on the wood. This is a very nice shaving out of this plane. It's thin on the edges, thicker in the middle, so I'm working about as well as I possibly can with that blade. If the first shaving that came out were quite narrow right in the middle, I would know next time I go to sharpen, I need to take some of the curvature out of the plain iron to work more in the middle. If it's really, really wide and a full thickness over its whole width, then maybe I need to put more curvature into it. So the point is, every time you take your plane apart to sharpen it, figure out what you need to do to keep the curvature the same, make it more or make it less, so you can spend your time being most effective when you're sharpening.